G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the east side of the map, in the color orange, playing as the Ottomans. As five vills head out towards that stone mine, we've got 3db. And on the west side of the map, in the color blue, playing as the Delhi Sultan, it's Anatand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dry Arabia. We're here on the pup at the moment, watching as Anatand begins to take, begins to make his mark on the competitive scene, going up against 3db. Anatand, obviously an up up and coming player, a rising star, if you will. I'm looking forward to seeing whether he's going to be able to take this game off B. Because he's on the Delhi Sultanate. And we've been seeing a little bit of a trend recently from the Delhi Sultanate. It's like this kind of fast castle shenanigans where they don't really fight for the sacred sites. And I'll be honest, I don't like it. I, I don't know. There, there must have been one game that happened between these guys. And they've just said, oh, that that's the way it's got to be played. It, it's maybe maybe they're just testing who knows but basically people are playing Delhi a little bit differently I don't know whether Anatan's gonna be doing that today uh, they're not going for all three sacred sites this is kind of interesting um, so they're just kind of looking to secure one sacred site and just going for a fast castle looking to try and pick up relics and then playing very heavily on elephants now as if, if you know all that information it seems like very easily you could come up with a counter plan a counter play and we've seen players on both sides uh, you know, look to try and, and do that and do so successfully. We saw a game uh, where China took on the uh, the Delhi Sultanate and just overwhelmed them with spears. And that, that was a very, very simple... Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't too complex. I mean, the game took a while to, to actually end and there were a couple of times where it looked a little bit scary, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's just... It, it lacks that certain je ne sais quoi. Uh, but uh, whether it gets you the win or not, I guess that's going to be completely different. But... Let's have a little bit of a look at the opening. So it's going to be eight vills, nine vills now on food, three vills on gold. So he went eight out to food, three to gold, and then one more back over to food. Interestingly, not heading to wood. There we go. There's the rally out to wood. So just going to be, just going to be playing it a little bit defensively. The single scout opening over on the other side of the map. Military school obviously coming out for B. And uh, going to be going for up to 10 villagers here on food. How much wood did he take off the top? Looks like 100 wood off the top uh, for B. So... Pretty standard opening, but we've got... Hold on a minute. I say that. Pretty standard opening. Hold on a minute, Drongo. We've got ourselves a mill over here. Five villagers already heading out early. I'll be honest. I do like this. I really do like this. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of wonder why it's not used more often. There's so many advantages to coming out here this early. Like, obviously, you, you lose a lot of villager gather time, so it's going to slow down your age up a fair bit. But I think for a civilization like the Ottomans, where you're not really aging up that fast anyway, like you're kind of looking at about a 430, 440 age up, it's not really going to hurt you that much. Like, I I'm sure that we could do the math. We could probably work it out, right? Like, when you think about it, a sheep, how much food does it gather on on underneath the town center? Or how much does a villager on sheep gather underneath the town center? And then compare that to how much food a... Uh, compare that to how much food a villager on the deer gathers... And, you know, uh, over, say, a three-minute period, you might have, say, a 30-food difference or a 40-food difference. And then you've got to ask the question, well, is this worth 40 food to come out here and and travel all the way out here? And I'm sure you'll find that the answer is yes, because 40 food is like a minute on sheep. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's that could definitely be worth it. But we do see an interesting development. The Sultan Hani Trade Network coming out. Now, the Ottomans on this most recent patch didn't actually receive a lot of changes. In fact, I think it was almost all exclusively bug fixes. I don't remember seeing a single balance change that affected the Ottomans, other than obviously just the standard balance changes that affect everybody. Things like the siege, having its cost reduced. We're talking about like bombards, trebuchets. Actually, did trebuchets have their cost reduced? I think it was just bombards. Bombards had their cost reduced. Uh, so I think the Great Bombard did get affected in that. But Anatan is gonna age up now. We do see Wheelbarrow about to finish. It's gonna be a Tower of Victory opening into the double, into the double mosque. Now, he's been annoying out here, but hasn't really been able to achieve much just yet. Villagers are gathering without too much of an issue out here. Uh, but he is going absolutely ham when it comes to these upgrades, and we do see him picking up Piety and also looking to pick up Sanctity at the same time. So, very nice little opening here from Anatan, and it's a very early opening. Jeez, he's going to be... Uh, I reckon he, he, you could be looking at, like, a six-minute... Uh, is this like a six minute sanct sanctity? That's kind of crazy. Uh, the, the speed that he's looking to pick up sanctity here. I tell you what, if, if some of these players actually decided, like, I don't, I don't know if he's going to do it, but I, I suspect after Piety, he goes straight into one scholar 
has a total of three scholars. He should be able to take all three sacred sites as soon as Sanctity is finished. Oh, he'll definitely have the time as well. Be being very annoying out here. I, but yeah, I guess for me, the big thing is I'd love to see all three sacred sites capped at the same time. The problem you're going to have is the Ottoman players actually got units to defend the sacred sites. Not to necessarily to defend them, but to challenge them. You know, as long as you've got one unit on every sacred site, you're okay. So I think that you're going to be forced to play an archery range here, but we do see a heavy amount of villagers on that on that, uh, on that that wood. And it's going to be a stable that gets thrown down despite the Tower of Victory. It's very interesting watching people go for Tower of Victory uh, and yet still go for the stables. Maybe is Tower of Victory just becoming more of a meta thing? Are people just like, you know what? Even if I open Cav, you know, the Tower of Victory is going to be nicer in the, in the late game just so I can, you know, potentially trend into it. But we do see Party coming through. Uh, three Scholars now jumping inside of the Mosque. And we've got Sanctity 50 seconds away. So he's got three Sacred Sites out here to potentially take. B obviously going to be pretty quick on the reaction. And look at this. B already heading out with the Imams looking to try and cause a little bit of healing towards the center of the map. Now, remember that we do have horsemen that are in queue at the moment for Anatan. He's got two in queue. No scholars inside just yet. Blacksmith going to be going down. So that's the first of the uh, the first of the blacksmiths coming in. Normally, we do like to see the, the two blacksmith opening, but a lot of spears coming out for B. He's going to also be moving into a meta, noting the fact that he's gone for a uh, the, the two imams, the field work bonus here. It's going to be important that he gets that meta out another way because normally we would see players opt in for something like uh meta drums it's it's quite uh it's quite meta lately i guess you could say sorry that was terrible uh eight vils now moving up towards this north side heading up to grab the next deer hunt so quite a bit of uh, early momentum out here and i think this is the consequence of not looking for the landmark that uh the twin minaret madrasa which gives you that extra little bit of bonus but interestingly now we've got sanctity which has been researched and Anatan just kind of stuck in his base. And I can't help but feel like, for me, this just doesn't make sense at all. Like, for me, the, the power of Delhi is in the sacred sites. And we've got someone who, uh, not someone, but we've got a play style that says, well, I'm, I'm just going to chill. I'm just, I'm biding my time. I'm just going horsemen. We're having a good time. You know, blacksmith, double mosque, all that jazz. But, you know, where are the units? I, I can't help but feel like a, a, a little bit worried here. The fact that we don't see any units out just yet. Um, obviously there's, there's horsemen that are yet to actually find any villagers, even though we do have the option for it. And we got a town center coming up. I didn't even see this from B. So going to be pushing up this town center here. This could have been interrupted, but Anatan not going to find it. More villas heading out now. We'll find these villagers though. And now we see the blacksmith dropped, a barracks dropped as well. And B looking to invest heavily in the economy. So no sacred sites taken just yet, but there's the three scholars making their way across the map. We do see they're also going to have all-seeing eye getting thrown out. So these guys are going to see about as far as a as a scout. Pretty close to it, at least. 48 seconds to go. Then they're going to have that all-seeing eye, that vision. So the first sacred site going to be capped up here. So interestingly, not going to be sending out individual scholars around the map. And wisely so. I mean, there is a scout down here. It's going to delay the capturing of the site, but not necessarily going to stop it forever once units do come down. But the town center has finished construction. Meta is out as well. And B just going to be taking up a defensive stand at this point. And I think that's that's exactly what he should be doing. But remember that these sacred sites are getting capped up. We do now see All Seeing Eye about to come through. Where is it? There it is. 11 seconds. I just, I want to see how much it actually increases. And I want to compare it to the scout because we've actually got a scout right here. So this is, this is the perfect opportunity for us to do it. Horseman going to be coming in as well. Eh, it's not that bad. It's definitely nowhere near a scout, though. I think you'd probably need to go another 100%. So I guess that just demonstrates the difference between the, the scout and a regular unit. You know, it's four times the vision radius, something like that. Maybe not four times. Yeah, about four times, actually. Double it and double it again. Reminds me of a meme that I saw online. It was like, we, we should tolerate other people's opinions. And then it's like other people's opinions. And it says like three to the power of two equals six. It's like, that's the other people's opinion. And all the comments are like, bro, it is, it is literally six. Stop trolling. Like, that's that. all of the comments are just like that. And I'm like, I really don't know anymore. Whether well, I don't know what to believe. For anybody wondering, the answer is nine. And for anyone wondering why, because when you do three to the power of something, you're doing to the, you're, you're going and timesing it by itself. So if I do four to the power, well, to, to the power of three, uh, I, I would be timesing it by itself and then by itself again. Uh, so... 
It is, uh, it, math is a complex thing, but uh, I can tell you now three to the power of two is not six. Three to the power of two is nine. So uh, don't get your, don't get your panties in a knickers, in, in, a, in a knot. Don't get your knickers in a knot. Uh, Google it. Just give it a Google. You can, you can work it all out. But uh, yeah, I, I, why did I even bring that up? I don't even remember why I brought that up. Memes. Memes. Probably something to do with memes. But interestingly, we don't see the same type of strategy coming out from Enetand, where he was looking to go for a quick castle. Instead, going to be spending more time in uh, in the Feudal Age. And we do see a, a buildup of units occurring now. Notably, he is missing Siege Engineering. At least I suspect he's missing Siege Engineering. Yeah, requirements are still Siege Engineering at this point in time. So... I'm curious as to how he's going to challenge this second town center. I guess with the scholars present, he can look to heal through that. But a nice little raid coming in. Metas are here together with the spears. Should be able to repel. And B's actually looking for a castle age. And this will be a decent hold for him. Because the Mangonel will easily deal with these archers that are coming through. He spots out the town center. And now begins moving all units in this direction. He should be able to siege it down. Just with, just with the horsemen. And now the villagers will become exposed. He's got eight vills and seven. Fifteen vills. There's only space for ten in here. So five vills is going to be potentially going the way of the dodo. Still no siege engineering at this point. It would make it a lot easier. But it's not necessarily impossible at this point in time. It's just going to be very difficult as those scholars move through. He's up to ten. Double digits now. Spearman moving up to try and cover. Sparky coming in on the action as well. And the meta going to be able to... <laughs> somehow they managed to defend it. Managing to, to, to somehow do it. Second Scholar also going to be going down. Some costly losses right there for Anatand. But a huge disadvantage when it comes to the military. 39 against... Or rather, 45 against 10. Only two sacred sites taken. Still that third one to the south. It frustrates me greatly that we don't see more Delhi players just looking to try and roll the dice on these sacred sites on the south side. And it's going to be Istanbul Imperial Palace coming up. What are these landmarks coming out right now? A landmark we haven't seen in quite some time. What is this? The Istanbul Imperial Palace graces our screens. It's been a while since we've seen it. Hold on, let me get that UI element back in there. Sometimes I press my buttons a little bit too quickly and they they don't they don't uh, well, let's just put it this way. They don't like to they don't like to come up on the screen. They they're a little bit shy. You got to get them out. Got to get them out of there. But we do see horsemen now moving back towards this position. Remember that uh, with the Istanbul Imperial Palace, you're going to have faster generation of those vizier points from all these buildings that are neighboring so the aoe you can see it around here so every unit that you create generates vizier points it can be as little as one vizier point for a villager or four vizier points for a knight we do see that town center is starting to take some damage arch numbers are looking good remember these guys have got their tower of victory bonus as well so and the really looking to try and use and abuse that bonus Remember that these units are in battle, and oh my lord, the Scholar healing. Nerf Scholars is actually terrible. Look how little damage they do, or healing they do. Now remember, Herbal Medicine is available once you reach the Castle Age, which will increase your healing, but still, it's not going to be pretty. Imams get losing their lives, unfortunately. A little bit of extra. For some reason, we've got melee armor that's coming through here. Meta just getting focused down. And the meta arms are going to be running through. Now, it's, it's going to take a while. Insufficient wood comes in. B might be in a little bit of trouble here. Still focusing down the town center. If he, if he can look to focus down the horseman, he should be okay. And we hear now B gets another vizier point. Comp out of the defender coming through for Anatan. Men at arms not being focused down. Instead, going for the back line. But the men at arms are slowly cleaning up this mess, this mass, and this, uh, this messy situation. Scholars do indeed go down. The nerf scholar, though, I tell you what, doesn't heal much, does it? It, it, it barely... It, I feel like it's barely healing at all. I don't know if I like that change, honestly. I feel like maybe just remove herbal medicine. But then uh, then that's a big buff to Fideli, though, right? Is it a big buff for Delhi? Maybe it's not a big buff for Delhi. I don't know. How do you how do you deal with this? Because now Town Center still alive. And all of the archers will get repelled. Castle Age comes through. And Atan will be looking for these relics. There's one, two, three, four, five relics still on the map at the moment. So scholars need to get out and about. He's got a single scholar that's remaining in this battle. Towards his base, he's got a couple more. One, two, three in the military production buildings. Needs to get him out on the map. But I tell you what, it's so hard to micromanage those kind of things. Two more out here. They can look to pick up these relics. He could actually pick up one of the relics and just look to wall alone. You try and get right up next to these men at arms. And because you've got the extra health together with the healing from an ally scholar. Look how slow that healing is. What happened to the Delhi healing? Why is it healing so slow? What? I, I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a bug check right there. That is like I can count that healing. That's crazy. Relic though, 
Still just chilling it out at the moment. Now, I think if you get close enough to the men at arms and you wallow low, like if if men at arms attacking a scholar that's wallow lolling, I feel like 100% the men at arms will get converted if they don't kill them, if they don't kill the scholar. So that is something to be very much aware of uh, if you do end to come up, end up coming in. Genissary now going to come out, gets immediately shut down. Curious decision to go into Genissaries, considering your enemy is making a large amount of uh, of archers. But we do see more Genissaries coming out. He's got got three more back here. We do see military skills. I'm fearful that he went for. <laughs> a very cute little block right there. Reminding me of, uh, was it Puppy Poor? I think it might have been Puppy Poor or Wham who, who were going for those type of Wallalols. Very, very nice. Uh, how many military schools do we have? There's only two military schools, so I'm fearful that he actually went for Genissary Company and got four Genissaries. Ay, 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 that does not feel good. And there's the Genissaries up towards the north, so getting good value from the Gens. Now going to be neutralizing this sacred site in the center. And uh, an Enetan going to be adding in some keeps back home. Almost enough resources for the first keep now. Has he looked towards... Yes, he has looked towards those village fortresses. So we may potentially see village fortresses coming out. Ideally, you'd, you'd love to see him... I would have loved to have seen him in a position where he aged up a bit earlier here. Maybe gone for a bit more aggressive... Uh, go for a bit more aggressive uh, opening with archers, but then not so many. Because there's a lot of archers here, but at the end of the day, the men at arms are just so effective at countering them. We do hear another point coming through for B now. And I suspect it's almost certainly that he's gone for that Vizier point. Just because there's only the one archery range. We'll switch it over now to income per minute so you can get an idea of where these guys are up to. It looks like at the moment Anatan sitting at about 2k resources. Uh, compare that to B, who's up on about 1500 or 2500. So a big difference there. But now the crossbow mass is beginning to build up to 8 crossbows. Knights also coming into it. There's no sign of any siege because we have that Istanbul. Never mind. There's the siege workshop. Uh, the Istanbul Imperial Palace. Uh, so normally you would have siege pressure playing as the Ottomans. Uh, but you don't obviously have that here. Just simply because you don't have the Mehmed Imperial Armory. What you do have is a very ballsy keep. This is a keep that Lord Doubt may be smiling down upon. A wallalo happens behind the scenes. Will the men at arms make it out? I've got a suspicion that he won't. He's running as fast as he can. He needed to be deleted. Those men at arms. You've got to watch out for him. And look at this keep. You want to get greedy. You want to get aggressive. Let's get aggressive with that. Be aggressive. I feel like a cheerleader right now. Be -e aggressive. We've got a, a a counter. A counter relic being picked up here. Unfortunately, the monastery is on the front side. So it will most likely be the first thing that goes down. Do we see a siege workshop thrown down behind this? That's normally the, the MO. There's the siege workshop getting thrown down a little bit slowly from Anatan. Just the one villager. Normally, there's like 20 villagers that are building that bad boy up. And we do see the Wi-Fi also going to be brought out to the front. Now, why is he bringing out the Wi-Fi? It's just research, right? I mean, are you researching siege? What, what is it? Siege works? Siege wheels? Big Manganel shot. Hits the crossbows. A lot of damage going through. Where are those scholars at? Only four scholars out at the moment. How many relics did he end up picking up? He ended up picking up four relics. So a really decent job there by Anatan to get those relics. Now needs to convert that into a bigger scholar mass because if he wants to play the late game, which he can do, uh, he's going to need more scholars. But interestingly, a distinct lack of keeps here. This is the first keep coming up. Janissaries over on the west side look like they may have caused a little bit of damage. We did see a dead villager down there. But where are those? Where are the rest of the keeps? We're at 18 minutes now. Still only the one keep. Not really playing into the strength of the village fortress. It's about to come through. 10 seconds to go. And Trebuchet is already working their magic and... It feels like B's got all the answers to the questions that Enetan is throwing out at the moment. Knight getting absolutely eviscerated by the Genissaries. Wasn't even close. You came to the wrong neighborhood, my friend. A beautiful micro coming in from B. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Genissaries in the Castle Age. And now we start seeing that build-up of tower elephants coming through. That's the first one. No more in queue, at least not for the moment. Better arms chasing a single knight. Look at him go. We'll get him, boys. Don't worry. If we, if we keep running, we'll eventually get him. Good job leading away the army, though. How, is there any way that he can and abuse it? Not really. I mean, he could he could run a couple of units into here and try and do some damage. But this... I mean, this is a textbook overreaction from B. But, uh... I mean, he, he'll get... The, he, he should he should get the kill, though. That's that's what's important, right? Looks like the, uh, the Springle moved up a little bit too far. 
Army wasn't here to protect and Anaten making a an unfortunate mistake. It's the second trap now arrives with its boulders and the third trap still making up its mind whether it wants to attack or whether it wants to go to sleep. Me personally, I'm more of a sleep kind of guy. I don't really like to attack a whole lot. There we go. Now those boulders are coming out. Three trebs. There goes your first village fortress. Really nice response coming out from B here. Fourth treb coming out. That is crazy amount of trebs. How is he making those so fast? Oh, blacksmith. He's got blacksmith influence. Oh no, he's got he's got the double uh, double siege workshop. See now, my fear is that Anatand doesn't have the tempo. Like he's he picked up the relics, but the sacred sites were just not held early enough. They weren't held for long enough. And he hasn't really converted much of these resources into village fortresses. By this stage, I'd like to see, you know, five keeps, one up on every single sacred site, you know, maybe a couple back in the base to defend, maybe a, a couple out on these big gold mines or something like that on the edge of the map. There's so many different ways that you can play the Delhi at the moment, but I, I just feel like Anatand, he's almost committing to a bit of an old school style of Delhi. Barracks is going to get thrown up here. And a huge investment of resources now into the siege. Now, remember that B has gone heavily into Siege to the Trebs to deal with the keep. And to defend the Trebs, he's gone into Springholds. And now those Springholds are kind of useless unless your enemy has their own Springholds. So how do you get your enemy to make Springholds? You make Mangonels. And now all of a sudden, your Siege isn't useless. Not like it once was. Unfortunately, does lose the, uh, the Springholds war there. Mangonel comes off. Nice little shot under the front line. Crossbow's still moving forward. Springholds. Trading out one for one. He's brought up the second one, and it looks like it will, will be a pretty decent trade here. B going to be able to take out the enemy Springholds. And now those Trebs looking to do some work here. Beautiful boulder shots down on the dead mosque. Big mass. Big mass of archers now. More than 50 archers and crossbows together here. And that siege ball continues rolling its way towards the enemy position. We bring in the cinematic mode as I feel it coming right now. Look at me as well. Adding in more scholars or more imams. Slowly pushing out towards these sacred sites. There's no keeps in sight. And even if there were keeps on these sacred sites, there's a, there's a keep. That's what I'm talking about. That's a nice, a nice keep. And he's throwing farms. A very weird position to throw down farms, but I'll allow it. But even if there are keeps, you've got trebuchets. And now you've got siege crews coming in. A very underused skill point, but a really, really strong skill point increases the attack speed of your siege by 25%. So this mangonel is firing faster and also increases the pack and unpack speed. So it means that when you spot enemy units, you're going to be unpacking your... Uh, you're going to be un unpacking your mangonel, firing that shot and then unpacking the micro... Or, and then uh, packing back up to, uh, to micro backwards. How many of these trap boulders actually hit? All of them by the looks of it. All right, we'll bring bring back our UI so we can see what's happening as more attacks are happening on the south side. Stone Wall's actually looking to come up and Knight's going to be chasing away some of these villagers. B has managed to climb to a 40 villager lead here. He's only got that two town center, but it's more than enough to give you that lead. Obviously, if you guys both, or if you create a second town center at 20 vills, and you both make 40 vills from each town center, well, all of a sudden you're up 40 vills. That's exactly the situation that we're in right now. It takes about, what, 12 minutes, 13 minutes to make that many vills? Yeah, about 13 minutes. Yeah, which, which would line up pretty pretty effectively or pretty reasonably with this. So this is about the timing that he wants. But once again, this keep on the front line just going to be absolutely obliterated by the Trebs. And he needs to find a way to challenge a huge Delhi army coming out, led by a number of elephants. Looks like the knight is going to be going down. Huge damage coming out from those tower elephants. 17 bow damage apiece. And now, now the march begins. He needs to keep these keeps alive. Keep's already gone down. He's just thrown down a mill in the place of the keep. Unfortunately, not as fearsome. And now the Delhi army looks to clash in upon the Ottoman army. Spearmen moving forward. Mangonel's on the backside. We've got a huge siege ball coming out from B. Archers on the south. Crossbows on the north. And it looks like it's going to be an absolute cleanup coming out from Anatant here. But hold on, hold on a moment. B still looking good. More siege coming out. More siege coming out. Hold on a minute. Look at the amount of siege that is coming out from B. Springled. This is this one of the most underrated techs or what? Look at siege crews. The fact that he's able to. 
get that additional attack speed, that extra unpack speed. And now Anatan's in a difficult spot. His enemy's got 100% siege, and he's saying, come at me, bro. I don't care what you've got. He's making spearmen, he's making genissaries. I tell you what, not a lot of people would have said, oh my God, he just taps out. He just says, I can't deal with it. I guess with the economy, the two town centers have been alive for this long. He realizes, I, I just can't do it. And he taps out against 100% seed composition in the late game. Fellas, hope you enjoyed this cast of game and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.